listen, man, you, you gave me no grace when I switched positions, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I'm not going to give you a shout-out right. right now, all right? I'm but, not. But, but all right, let me, let me more go back. importantly than me, okay. what, what, are, what, is y'all's, what is y'all's, what is your last name? All right, so my last name is Austin. What was her my maiden wife, last name? My wife's maiden name is Austin. So for a year, actually, we didn't date. Um, we had to make sure we weren't family uh, before we. <laughs> and, and, and thankfully, very, during, very good. Hey, thankfully during that time, our grandparents and a lot of older family that kept family records were alive, and we just took the time. And I think that's why we're so involved with our family to this day because we got a chance to learn, <laughs> learn a lot, and meet a lot of family doing our research. Had to go through all the steps. Doing right, our let's, research, let's hey, doing our research for here. love, man. You know, but it took about a year, man. But and, and but I think that was so great because we grew together as friends, you know. And I'm saying not date for a year. I'm talking nothing, you know, just phone calls. I see you at class, and that's it, you know. So again, it took a year, and uh, you know, Austin Squared is what I what I called her when we first got <laughs> married. <laughs> More stories like that. Go out to uh, Dine to Donate today, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. over at uh, Columbia, Craft, Co Columbia Craft Brewing is where you can go and hang out and uh, catch up with Jonathan. 803-404-6100. I'll tell you what, let's let's revisit this with an offensive lineman here, with an offensive lineman. Jen, i tell you what, if we can run it back here, uh, number nine, offensive line and the offense being behind the defense and get his take on the offensive line being behind the defense at this stage of spring practice and let you two kind of get into that. Here is Shane Beamer yesterday talking about the offensive line and the offense as a whole being behind the defense. I think there's a lot of times, I think we all had our moments and um, it's spring spring scrimmage number one I uh, and defenses everywhere that I've ever coached should be a little bit ahead of offenses particularly in the springtime if you don't I think it probably doesn't bode well for your defense I was part of a lot of scrimmages with my dad at Virginia Tech where I walked off the practice field wondering if the offense was going to be able to score a touchdown the entire season much less you know win a football game because the defense was was really really good and our defense was really really good the other day and um, <clears throat> uh, was the offensive line what we wanted no but I'd say as an offense overall it wasn't what we wanted and we could certainly be better and, but also the offense sat in there next door yesterday in their offensive meeting and went through every play from the scrimmage. And, you know, it's as always on offense, you know, defensively, you can have 11 guys flying to the ball and two guys do something wrong and it's okay. The other nine make up for it and it's a okay play. Offensively, you can have uh, 10 guys doing everything right. And one guy takes the wrong step or runs a route at the wrong depth and it, a bad play, you know, so um, everybody on offense, defense, special teams, we can all be better. It wasn't what we wanted, but I didn't walk out of there saying, oh, my God, we got problems up front by any stretch of the imagination. They're going against a pretty good defensive front right now, I think, too. So how do we how do we take that? I, I'm not trying to be critical. I just feel like at times it is a cop out to say, oh, the defense should always be ahead of the offense. The defense should always be ahead of the offense. Yeah, I'm uh... – I have no problem being critical, but I do think it's true to an extent. I mean, I, I've never played offensive line. Jonathan, you played offensive line for a long time. How difficult is it in the early stages of implementing an offense to get everybody going in the right direction? I mean, it, it's tough because, I mean, everything is about time and everything is about cohesion. And, you know, again, you got, you know, a lot of guys that are playing together for the first time, you know, and just specifically thinking about the offensive line, you know, you got to kind of move as one. And it takes a while for that chemistry to come together, you know. And then what happens a lot of times with offensive linemen, you know, most time injuries and different things mess up that chemistry, you know. So, you know, if you can have somebody to compliment, you know, uh, coming into that as a sixth man or what have you to, to help with that, that helps. But the chemistry has to be there. The timing with the quarterback and the receivers have to be there. You know, there's a lot more to it than just, you know, hey, this guy is a great, you know, great quarterback or a great – you know, everything has to go in tandem. So that chemistry piece is very important. Um, and guys just working as a machine together. And that's th that's tough, especially with young men. How how tough is it to plug in, let's just say, two new guys on the offensive line? If you got three, and I I'll give an example. Vershawn Lee is, is back. Ja'Kai Moore is back. Those two are experienced guys that have been around here for a long time. Uh, I know that they're only freshmen, but Tree Babalade played a lot last year. Travon Ball played a lot last year. Both of those guys are back. Say what you want, he's constantly injured, but Case and Henry 
has practiced. He, he seems to get injured when he plays in an actual game, but he has practiced a lot. That's my part to me is like, you go, okay, well, chemistry and all this. I, I get it, but it's also not like we're just throwing five new guys out there like Dawn Staley did throw five new women out there as their starting lineup. This is – these are guys that have been – so when, if you're just replacing, say, two guys and you're trying to get them up to speed, how difficult is that? I think it depends on leadership um, yeah, and, and the position. Uh, you know, because, again, a lot of times the center is going to be the, the quarterback of the offensive line kind of. Um, you want everybody to have the high IQ and the high acumen to play, but – you know, if you have strong leadership on the offensive line, I know for me, when I first got the offensive line, you know, I was playing with, you know, Travell Ward, and you mentioned Shane Hall, Cedric Williams, C.J. Fry, um, you know. Uh, so to that point, how important was a guy like Travell Ward in helping ex you? Extremely, extremely. I was blessed twice in my life or many times to have great guys that I played behind, you know, but, you know, Travell is an instrumental because he just focuses on fundamentals. I had that again, you know, when I went to Washington, you know, um, and, and playing behind Chris Samuels, you know, and John Jansen. You know, if you have strong leadership, whether it's vocal or also by action, that helps folks coming in. And I think that's not only with football, that's with business, that's in life, period. You know, so um, that's why we're doing what we're doing as well at, at Beyond Now, you know, to, to show that leadership. But to go back to football, that's imperative. Those two guys coming in, if the leadership is there, you know, not only with the, the position coach, but I'm talking about on the field, peer-to-peer, -peer, that will help them out tremendously. Also, i get your take when we come back on changing up an offense subtly because there is the story, and maybe y'all can expound on it a little bit, about after the 3 Clemson game, Lou Holtz basically grabbing, I think, Demetrius and saying, we're changing the offense next year. We're running it my way. Now, you mentioned a little bit, a little bit ago about – uh, Lou coming over and saying, we're changing their blocking scheme. I know what you've done for four days. We're doing it my way. But I want to hear changing the offense, because it is going to be a different offense with Lenore Sellers, who can use his legs, as opposed to Spencer Rattler, who was more of a stand back there and throw kind of guy. I still stand shocked that Spencer ran a four nine five at the. <laughs> I, I tried to tell you. Know, I it? tried to tell you. You've been right about a lot of things. I, tried, I was maybe the one that called me the I most. I tried hard. to tell you. Like I was like, oh, and by the way, I meant to bring this up. Your boy is now starting to be projected as a top five pick. My guy. Preston, it was, if you want to know that Preston was on it before anybody else, he was on the J.J. McCarthy bandwagon, and there is talk that he could go in the top five now. Four quarterbacks in the top five. We'll, we'll let Preston gloat on that a little bit as well this morning. But I want to get your take on, for offensive linemen, when you change small schematic things like Sean Elliott might do in the run game mm -hmm. or like you might go from having, uh, you know, almost going from a Phil Petty to a Corey Jenkins, going from a guy who's more of a drop-back passer to a guy who's going to use his legs. What's that like for an offensive line? We'll get your expertise there. Preston will gloat about uh, J.J. McCarthy now My guy. just shooting up draft boards, <laughs> having not played a game. He is winning. <laughs> J Nobody has won the, the underwear Olympics in the winter better than J.J. McCarthy. We'll let Preston gloat on that. You're listening to Jonathan Austin, Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, She's Jen Jensen. It's the early game.
In Lexington, Old Chapin and Old Cherokee Roads, an accident there. Also, I-20 westbound at Two Notch Road. Also, I-20 westbound after Clemson Road. So be careful in those areas, please. And a couple showers that we do have around will be dissipating here shortly. Uh, going to be a high of 79 today. 76 tomorrow with wind and stormy conditions. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, then come Friday, a high of 72. Still going to be kind of windy out there. Some residual from that earlier, the earlier storm system. But then Saturday and Sunday, 77 and 84 respectively. Should be very nice. And really, we're going to be in the 80s all next week. Right now, though, it's 59 on the early game. Eight seventeen on your Wednesday morning. Countdown is on with uh, countdown is on for the Masters Par three taking place here later on today. Three o'clock. That'll actually be broadcast on ESPN. I want to remind you coming up tomorrow we'll have Carolina calls with Mark Kingston at six p.m. and then Friday from twelve to three the halftime show will be live from TEC Equipment Rental twenty twenty five Old Dunbar Road in Casey. So we got a lot going on the next few days. And again also a reminder coming up on Sunday, two o'clock, Columbia will honor Dawn Staley and the national champions. Uh, a 2 p.m. parade on Main Street. It'll begin at the 1700 block of Main Street and will conclude at the intersection of Main and Gervais in front of the South Carolina State House. So a lot going on here over the next few days. One of the things is the Masters, and we'll get a lot more into that tomorrow. By the way, we've already played a game of bench cut start that Preston got into with sandwiches down there. Mm hmm. Uh, we did not have a consensus, I do not think. I, or was the was the classic chicken club the ch classic chicken uh, sandwich? No, nah, it was it was pretty varied. I mean, some people like Jonathan started the pimento cheese. That wouldn't have been my choice to start. I, I would start with the club. Um, some people started with the classic chicken sandwich. I got rid of the ham and cheese on rye because I don't do any rye bread at all. I think Jen went with the chicken salad, but minus celery or onions because we don't like the crunch so there's a lot of variation that's why i think this is a good it's a good offering of uh of sandwiches for for the um for the masses i think most would say the like the historical sandwiches or the pimento cheese right. and the the egg salad um because i feel like that's what i've always heard about the pimento cheese in particular down there is what i would say is the historical like it, it, kind of like if you go somewhere even if you're not into that you need to do it. You have to try it. That's fair. Uh, I, th I feel like that's the 803-404-6100. Is that what you have to try and bench cut start on? Also, some folks came in with the, the, barbecue, the barbecue barbecue as a sleeper sandwich. And yeah, I can see that. yeah I did, we didn't see that on the price. I'll see if I can pull back up the master's prices and see if there's something on that because everything, that's what I was telling Preston and, and Jonathan. You do go down there, obviously, you're going to pay to get in. And then if you go to the pro shop, I mean, you know, ninety dollars for a pullover, twenty eight, thirty dollars for a Yeti Masters Cup or whatever. I mean, they aren't like, oh, they paid a lot of money. Now they're in the pro shop. Take care of them. Right. Uh, but at, but at least at the the concessions, uh, they're done that way. And uh, so, we'll, but I'll see if I can get that barbecue sandwich. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. So I want to go back for an offensive lineman. You had to y'all had to make a bit of a transition because going from Phil Petty to really what Lou wanted a little bit more with a true running quarterback in Corey Jenkins. Is there a lot of adjustments that this offensive line will have to make going from a Spencer Rattler who really wanted to stand back there and sling it to a Lenore Sellers who they're going to utilize his legs more? Well, first off, shout out to Phil Petty. God bless you. Um, rest in peace. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh, from Phil Petty to, you know, Corey Jenkins, talking about timing. Timing, timing changes it all. You know, you have your count change. You have, you know, the flow of the offense change. You know, so that does change a lot, you know, but you practice for that. Um, you know, again, because you're going to have guys go down, but it's tough. It's tough to change, you know, the, the, the rhythm 
of a game. You well, know? let me ask you this. What do you prefer to block for? Do you, would you prefer to block for a guy who's standing back there in no, the pocket? I want or somebody that has moved around because they can make me look good. All right. Sure. <laughs> All right. For sure. So, so for a guy sure. that can make – but when they're making – when they're moving around – that sort of changes your angles, and that changes what what how you're blocking the specific, especially it, if you pass blocking. Yeah. It does, it does. But typically, you know, the the guys that can run are probably the guys that you know can can really, you know, even if there's a missed block, they can evade that tackler or whatever else, and again make the offensive line look good. Now, mm-hmm. with a stand up guy, oh, you're earning your money every play, you know, because you have to keep everybody off him. Period. He may miss one, you know, but most of the time. <laughs> You know, those guys not are not as athletic, you know. I mean, Spencer ran a four nine. <laughs> Which again, as I'll continue to say, just just because he was sneaky fast, right? No. No. Well, he would get out of the pocket and it seemed to like wiggle up the side. I mean, he wasn't running. That's T V speed. Okay. All right, okay. All right, T V speed. No, okay. That makes a lot more never mind then. I see what you're saying there. Is it is it when you're gonna have a guy like Lenora Sellers, because you always hear like he starts moving on you say he makes you look good, but now you're holding because the defensive line shifts on you because he's moving somewhere and you are unaware of that. How difficult but is again, that? If you think about it, again, you think about your preparation though. You know, your pra- at practice you're getting that same type of look and that same type of scenario. So you kind of understand it, it, it. You adapt to your teammate and, and the way that they play, you know. So if you know you have a runner behind you, you know, you're going to you're gonna make adjustments. You kind of almost like you have different timers in your head going off. Like, all right, you know, this is this ty- type of time and play. You know, this is how I'm going to block it if this happens, whatever. But you, you kind of get a feel for it. You know, it's not re- – that piece is something that you get a feel for. You can't really teach it, if that makes sense. 803-404-6200 reminder coming up later on today uh out at columbia craft uh you've got your uh dying to donate i'm going to go somewhere with this in just a second because i've got a, i've got something that i think is pretty funny but go by dying to donate dying to donate eating for a good cause has never tasted so good you can go over jonathan will be over there all the a portion of the proceeds will go to the beyond now foundation again it's from 2 p.m to 10 p.m you can go by have a beverage you can enjoy some food some great food over there jonathan will be there one of the stories i'd like to hear your buddy here and i don't know if he's ever told you this had a traumatic experience like he brings it up constantly if we go he had a very traumatic experience Y'all went to Arkansas. He got to meet Jason Peters. 20 years later, it is sticking with Preston Thorne. Did you have a traumatic experience on the offensive line where you ran into a defensive lineman and was like, ooh, that guy's different. That guy's not, that guy's a little different. I would go back when we played, uh, I think it was LSU. <laughs> I went against, uh, what was it, Lavalle? You remember Lavalle? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that guy was different. <laughs> yeah, they also had this dude, Marcus Spears, who's on TV. <laughs> yeah, he was different. He was different as well. You know, but again, you know, you, I remember, you know, you have a perception of certain guys before you play them. Um, I forget the guys that were on the D-line with Virginia. Um, they were supposed Chris to be Candy. Chris Candy, all mm-hmm. those guys, Dallas guy, right? And they're supposed to be great. You know, so again, shout out to, to my senior, junior offensive line again. Nashawn, Javari, Chris White, John Strickland. All right, we went in and we smashed them. We ran for so many yards, and there was supposed to be a bunch of. We had, I mean, we had four of us went to the league. Oh, that was the next year. That was that was the one that had the traumatic Corey Boyd hit on that guy out there. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes, 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 absolutely. Which only the people in the fans were surprised at because we had seen Corey was one of those folks that were in practice where you had to tell oh, yeah. him, like, relax, Yeah, bro. just relax a little this bit. This is chill <laughs> out. a little bit. I, I, Between that, Corey Boyd and the Lindsay twins, oh, yeah. it's like, yo, <laughs> yes. please slow down. And, and, and we're, we're older by that time, so it's like we understand practice tempo, and these yes. young dudes do not. And so the Lindsay, between the Lindsay twins and Corey Boyd, it's like, man, put, put a yellow jersey on me. I, I, <laughs> those I, had dudes to, I, had learn, I had to learn that my first year in the league. Slow down. Slow down a little bit. They told you to slow down? Slow down, young fella. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> so was that, but was there, what was it, Lava? I, f- I forget the, the guy from LSU. Yeah, La- Lava Lay was probably, because that was like early in my career, and he was just a, a monster. He was a, the beast at that time to me. You know. But. Chad Lava Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. 
803-404-6100. So you can go out to Dime to Donate today. Jonathan will be out there. You can get more just interesting stories uh, like that with him. Again, that's over at Columbia Craft uh, Brewing, 520 Green Street, uh, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. today. And, again, a portion of the revenue uh, from all sales will go to Beyond Now Foundation uh, and be a part of that. 803-404-6100 is how you can join us this morning. If you want to do so, Jonathan Austin sitting in with us. Uh, we'll get your take on some basketball. John Calipari leaving and also uh, a women's legendary coach deciding to step away. I'll let you two discuss that. Get your take on that. And Jeff weighs in and says the best master's lunch. He's got everything here. Best master's lunch. Two pimento cheese sandwiches, Snickers bar, beer, and since it's a bucket list trip, you have to go to Carbo to load up so you walk. You have to you have to Carbo load to walk the whole course. Of course. That's that's why I carb load every day, yeah. right? Sure. It's strategic. It's strategic. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. Jeff weighed in on the best master's lunch. 803-404-6100. By the way, I just read this as I was looking for something. Did you know, you know, they got green bags. They are kind of, it's it's part of the tradition. Like green. the Cersei or gift No, gift no, no. Like, well, you saw you saw those pictures I sent you of the sandwiches earlier? Yes, yeah. And they're all in those little green bags, mm -hmm. right? It says, um, to go back to this, there's a picture of the green bags. They were designed to have green bags so that when the bags were dropped, they would just blend in with the ground. Okay. They don't miss anything. Okay. That's that's part of the masters right there is that uh, the bags were designed to blend in. I did not know that until just now. I just thought it was part of the masters, but it says that uh, they were designed to blend in with the ground so you didn't see them. Also, it feels like the masters is so meticulous that as soon as the bag might possibly leave your hand, somebody oh, is there. So somebody catches it before yeah, it's the ground. Before you the ground think of, they're in your you mind before it. you even think about it. Yeah, it says, uh, yeah, 803 404 6100. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Jonathan Austin, Bill Gunner, Xi Jen Jensen. It's the early game. Bill Gunner for Xeris Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. And as we roll along here in 2024 and as we roll along during the spring, spring cleaning still a very popular thing that you may have to do this weekend unless you take the life hack. That's right. Take the cleaning out of your schedule. Go with the pros at Xeris Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. That's right. You contact them today, 803 Two six two forty twenty. You can take advantage of their April sale. Get three rooms of carpet clean for only one hundred and twenty nine dollars. When you mention me, Bill Gunner at one zero seven five. The game book online zero as Columbia dot com. You can check off the cleaning of the carpets, rugs, tile, upholstery, all by calling zero res. Again, mention me, Bill Gunner at one zero seven five. The game and you get three rooms of carpet clean for only one hundred and twenty nine dollars. You can give them a phone call eight zero three two six two forty twenty, or you can schedule online zero as Columbia dot com zero res spelled backwards or forwards is the right way to clean.
I-20 westbound after Clemson Road and I-20 westbound at Two Notch Road. Accidents in both locations there are in both of those locations, so be mindful of that. Also, uh, still working Old Barnwell Road near Emanuel Church Road. Looks like uh, 378 at Pineview or Halbrook Drive uh, in the cleanup stages there. Also working an accident in Lexington, Old Chapin at Old Cherokee. So just be mindful of those. And uh, your forecast for today, a couple showers maybe this morning. Should be clear night here pretty soon. 79 for the high wind and storms tomorrow, 76. Beautiful weekend ahead, but it's 60 right now. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. how you can weigh in this morning if you want to do so as we roll along. Jonathan Alston joining us here in studio. Again, Masters getting underway tomorrow, but today at 3 o'clock will be the Par 3 event. Be kind of entertaining. That is also an event. I go back and forth. I've been to the Par 3 event, and you do have, it is the what I would say the most relaxed event aspect of the masters even the practice rounds are kind of odd from the standpoint of you feel you feel very you feel the need to almost be quiet you feel the need to not bother them whereas the par three they have their kids out there they normally have their wives or caddying or if they have a a teenage son or something it is the most relaxed of the event and seems pretty cool i would always say actually if, if you had me rank the days of going to the masters it would be honestly Wednesday, Saturday, and Friday in that order. Like Wednesday, because it's you get to experience the Masters. I will admit, as I've gotten older, being at a golf tournament is becoming less and less for me. Gotcha. Like, like going to an actual during the rounds golf tournament. Is there a th- is there a thrill of of finishing out the la- you know on the Masters Sunday? Is there is there a thrill in that being there? It's for too the hard end? to see. I got you. It's too hard. To, it's 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 you have too much going on throughout that Sunday. Best time I I will say I will say best golf tournament I ever went to was uh, what oh five I believe when Tiger chipped in on sixteen. I was down there. My father and I got up in the morning because Lexington to Augusta is an hour. Went down to like six thirty seven o'clock. Got down there at about eight o'clock. Had our tickets. Went in. Set up chairs. Again, I, I mentioned yesterday the old. The older folk down there who've been around, who've had those tickets, they know how to maneuver. It's like there's tunnels underground that they are well aware of, and they pop up places. But we set up some chairs and watched until about 1.30, 2 o'clock when the leaders, in that particular year it was Tiger, and I believe it was Phil Mickelson, who were in the final pairing. We packed up our chairs. We walked over. And I mean, it's even on number one, you're six, seven deep. And I'm not Jonathan, and I'm not you. I, I can't see over people. <laughs> That's not happening. All right, I'm limited on my viewing experience. And and we but we walked over and kind of weaseled my way to the front. They teed off. We watched them walk by, and then we walked across the little crosswalk on one and went up to the clubhouse and we left. And again, hour, we get back to the house. They're only on number hole. They're only on four or five, and watched the rest of the tournament where you know CBS is panning around and showing me everything that's going on and. Because, I mean, if you're walking the course and somebody's making a move and they're four holes away from you, you hear the roars, and that's cool. And But now you're looking up at the leaderboard and you just don't get to see it. Um, but the prestige of the Masters, you, you got to go once. And I would say, honestly, on Wednesday might might be, I don't know if people will agree with me, but I would say that the, the prestige, the Wednesday, where guys are a little more serious, the, then you go to the par three where guys are a little more lighthearted, it's probably about as fun as it is. Sounds about, that sounds right. 803-404-6100. So John Calipari officially stepping away 
uh, from Kentucky, putting it out there. Uh, I don't think they've made the official announcement as I look this morning. Nothing has come up yet on the official announcement for for Calipari and Arkansas. Pretty much all the details are out there, but they just haven't announced as far as I see right now is at 838 uh, announcement. But Cal, you- made a, Cal made a video. Uh, Jim, we have a, we have a clip from Cal. I think it's really interesting. That's number 12. I think it's really interesting to hear what he had to say because it's while the university hasn't made it official, I guess it's yeah. I mean, he's that's official. what I'm saying. It's a very odd thing. But here's John Calipari in the video he put out to Kentucky fans. The last few weeks, we've come to realize that this program probably needs to hear another voice. That the university as a whole has to have another voice giving guidance about this program that they hear. And the fans need to hear another voice. We've loved it here, but we think it's time for us to step away and step away completely from the program. There have been opportunities that have been presented to us, and we're discussing them as a family. Um, I love coaching. I love coaching young people. I love this year's team. I loved every day walking in. They've invigorated me. I love the chase for championships. I love bringing the kids together. It's what I do. It's who I am. How does that strike you to hear? Because, again, you're right. There's been no announcement. We all know what's going on. And he takes a video. This is almost self-serving to me of like, hey, Kentucky, I'm still better than you. Uh, and I just think it's time for me to step away. Like, how do you take that? I, I felt like he was trying to get ahead of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, that was very noble. That was great. But <laughs> I just feel like he was trying to, you know, outpace something that was going to happen anyway. And he wanted to go out the way he wanted to. Yeah. I, I And... and most coaches, 98% of them, 90, probably all of them, maybe 100, have egos. And this is him. Like, it's, he's not being fired, but this is him almost saying, like, I'm stepping away. Y'all need another voice. But I got bigger and better things lined up. You don't, right. you know about it, but I can't talk. I mean, it's right. just because then he follows me. He's like, we've had other options in the past. Right. He we've had, had other options. He had to add that, for sure. What do you take? I mean, yeah, I think that's that's all accurate. But the strange thing about Cal is for as much as everybody talks about it, I believe him when he says he loves coaching. I believe him when he says he's all he's done nothing but love his love his athletes. And it's just a really interesting kind of just position between what people think about Cal and I wonder who Cal is behind closed doors because you always hear pretty positive reviews from his, from his players, but he has not been successful as the coach of Kentucky based on what they deem as success. He's a little outdated. I don't know if that'll change when he goes to Arkansas. You talking uh, X's and scheme X's and O's and how he wants to build a program. He loves recruiting. He he loves walking it. I would assume nothing's changed in the last 13, 14, 12, 13, 14 years was when I was scouted. That man loved walking into an AAU facility. The buzz. And, and normally he'd have, I believe it's Orlando Antigua with him uh, and Orlando's a big imposing guy it, you know it's like showing up to the club and you got your bodyguard <laughs> and you are the spectacle and I I've seen him I've told the story about what he did to other coaches that was the biggest flex move ever when we were in Orlando at an AAU tournament and Stanley Johnson's father calls him and every other coach I'd ever seen in every other coach any AAU tournament ever every big name coach would take a phone call and go into a hallway and go away from everybody else so that nobody heard the conversation, the recruiting conversation. And we're on the bleachers, and John Calipari takes the phone call and loudly, loudly has a phone conversation. This is this is, this is, is the, the person in Walmart who is on the earpiece, and you're on, in line, and that person wants you to hear their conversation, and you're annoyed by it. I'm sorry, I've been there. You. Who, who is this? Yeah. Five-star? <laughs> McDonald's All American. Yeah, you call right. it Coach Cal. Are you interested in? It's, what did you say? I can't hear. It started because he was about four people away from me, and I believe I believe we were watching the Harrison Brothers, and all you heard is, "Hey, Mr. Johnson, good to hear from you. How's Stanley doing? <laughs> Hadn't seen him this week, but I'm going to see." And it's one of those things you, you turn, 
And every other, uh, because because we were watching other five-star prospects, Krzyzewski was there. At that time, Roy Williams was there. Uh, I mean, you name the big-name coach, they were sitting there listening, Bill Self. And, and John Calipari is having this phone conversation, this recruiting conversation out loud, and he is bragging, telling Absolutely. Stanley Johnson's father, you got a lot of great colleges you can choose from. Stanley's incredible. He goes, but none of them offer what Kentucky does, and that is when you come to our school, you practice against nine other future pros day in, day out. You don't come for the games. And he literally told him, he said, you go to those other schools for the games. And that helps you some. He goes, but it's just like going to a college where it prepares you every day for your profession. You're coming to school for for coaching Absolutely. for coaching and practice and not for the games he goes you can make a good decision to go to the other schools but there's no school out there that will prepare your son for his profession better than kentucky and you got just other coaches sitting there rolling their eyes like this guy <laughs> this guy and of course stanley johnson ended up going to arizona but that meant that that dude has as good as big an ego as any coach i've run into for sure for sure you wouldn't be able to deal with those types of personalities but the problem was the business proposition of you come here for the practices and not the Absolutely. games. That doesn't work for the people who I, want to win I'll games. I'll get back into that. Right. The, yes, 803-404-6100. We'll come back. We'll wrap up the show here. We'll, I'll, I'll come back to that for a second. You're listening to The Early Game. Bill Gunner for the Ecton Law Firm. Tax season is almost over, but that's not going to stop the IRS from anything they're thinking about doing. And if you've already received one of their dreaded notices of intent to levy or placing a lien on you and you're concerned, it will have an effect on you personally, maybe, or your business. Well, the Ecton Law Firm is ready to help you. That's what they do. They're professionals at it, and they're ready to start by offering you a free consultation 803-771-9800 time is limited but you can get in touch with the ecton law firm today and get a deal worked out get something figured out that's what they do at the ecton law firm they understand the challenges you're facing that's why they're there to help you that's why john ecton and his team are ready to offer you the peace of mind you deserve and they're doing it with proven local solutions find out more by getting a free consultation call today and tell them bill gunner sent you 803-771-9800 Bill Gunner for Mid-State Roofing. I tell you, we've got a little rain in the forecast coming up, some thunderstorms. Well, you know what? You want to make sure you have leak detection. That's right. And then once you get that figured out, you want to make sure you have the prevention part of it as well. Well, at Mid-State Roofing, they understand that better than anybody in the business. They've been doing it for nearly 30 years, and they've been the leader in the roofing and waterproofing industry, and they want to help make sure that you keep your operation up and running and staying dry. So call today, 24 hours a day, 7 
days a week, Mid-State Roofing has someone on call ready to help you. Whether it's an on-call technician or a Mid-State Roofing employee, 803-356-1919. Again, that's 803-356-1919. If you've got a leak, let Mid-State Roofing take a peek. Eight forty nine. As we wrap things up here, Preston Thorne, Jonathan Austin. Again, a reminder: a lot of great events going on for the Beyond It Now Foundation, and one of them is occurring today over at Columbia Craft Brewing, where you can go and you can dine to donate. Eating for a good cause has never tasted so good. Stop by Columbia Craft Brewing, five twenty Green Street today, from two p.m. to ten p.m. Grab yourself a lunch, maybe watch a little bit of the Masters Par Three tournament. A portion of the revenue will go to Beyond It Now's foundation in support of rural and underserved students so go by columbia craft day jonathan Austin will be there you can get more you can harass them get more lou holt stories more lou holt. you get more preston thorne stories that'll be even better more preston thorne stories on uh the uh unapologetic no feelings preston thorne who was not there for his buddy his roommate when jonathan Austin was moved from being a, a mean angry defensive lineman to a puppy dog of an offensive lineman. again all i probably had was i could offer him a beverage I mean, I could offer him a, an adult beverage and be like, hey, man, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> we got we got practice tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't even offer you didn't even offer 72 looks more slimming on you. Yeah, 86 is a wide number. Yeah. Like, hey, see you on the other side. I'll yeah. get him. There we go. Yeah, basically, he was like, hey, man. I'll, yeah, see you on the other side. That's all I got. Appreciate you. Offer you a beverage and then be like, tomorrow I'm running over you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's well, it's just it. flashbacks to high school because I played one year of offensive line in high school. So... Again, you know, that was my opportunity to, you know, just kind of go back to old times when I went to the offensive line in college. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. So you go out there to uh, Columbia Craft Brewing today and uh, and stop by see Jonathan 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Again, a portion of the proceeds from anything will go to the Beyond Now Foundation. Um, to go back to what we were just talking about, that is the thing with, Jonathan, uh, with John Calipari. He made it known, Preston, and I think this is an ego thing from the get-go. Hey, man. I'm here to get kids to the NBA and and never really mentioned I'm here to win championships. That's a wild – if you're Kentucky fans, that's, you want championships. You want Final Fours. Well, for a while, those two circles blended together. Get NBA kids, we will win championships. That's what it was supposed to happen. And then all of a sudden, he kept getting kids to the NBA, but then – the championships were not happening. And so what he was trying to do and what the people wanted to happen were two different objectives. Yeah, because Kentucky fans can be a lot like Gamecock Larry. I love you when you're here. <laughs> when you're gone, I can't remember your name. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that got played for us? Oh, yeah. cool. And and in the one-and-done era, it it is kind of an interesting... Also, yes, to that right. point. And that's a great point, Bill. In the one-and-done era, how much developing was actually happening at Kentucky? You was going to go there for six months... 
and then you was gone, and it's so that's cool, but that idea that he was developing players was even turned down a little bit. There's players that play in the NBA today, and it's like, oh, yeah, he went to Kentucky. I'm like, really? Huh. Yeah. I, it, I don't know how long it took me to figure out Devin Booker played in Kentucky. I was like, <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Didn't realize that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it's Real quick, I don't have enough time to do this with you all, but there was something that got brought up yesterday that I thought was fascinating about how recruiting 25 years ago was, did you two either, either of you, even though he was only in his first year, ever take into account the fact that Lou Holtz may not be there when he when y'all's career would be done? Well, I didn't think about that because I didn't, I didn't go to South Carolina because of Lou Holtz. Okay. Um, I went for, because of relationships with guys that we were coming in with and guys that were there, you know. But, you know, I, knew, I got conditioned to new coaches going from D-line. I had three different offensive line coaches. So, you know, that would be a challenge. That would be a challenge to have a figure. Well, if, if Lou Holtz would have left, I don't think that would have been too much of a challenge. Um, we had great other coaches that could have stepped up and continued on, but – but yeah, that 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 well, whole deal. One of the things that Cal, one of the things that Cal said in that in that speech or video, whatever you, cause whatever that was, was that you just needed a new voice. And I think I speak on a lot of my teammates' minds where the Lou Holtz voice was awesome for a couple of years, right? But there was a point where you kind of got tired of that voice, and maybe you needed something else to be said at the time. I, all I would say is, with the new transfer rule, you don't care if, like, say, a Mac Brown is only going to coach two more years. That thing about coaching longevity doesn't matter, right? Like with right. John Calipari, you're like, I'll, I'll go there. Okay, well, if he leaves, I'll just transfer out. That's right. true. I'll just, it, it, I have no restrictions anymore. Mac Brown's got the number 18 recruiting class in the country right now, and he's just chilling, I guess. And, I mean, you think about like, kind of like with Nick Saban, if you were to go have gone there, I, I didn't know about that. I wish I'd have gotten into that yeah. a little bit more with you all because that's an interesting thing now with the way college sports are. Oh, I'll go here, but if you leave – Shoot, I'll just transfer and no, yeah. no punishment. That's it. Columbia Craft Brewing today, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Go by and see Jonathan Austin. A portion of the proceeds goes to Beyond Now. Fun having you back in. Thank you, brother. Thanks for having me. I'll see you a little bit later, sir. That'll work. That'll All work. Right. Well, hey, Go by and see both of them. Look forward to seeing everybody tonight, this afternoon. Y'all take care. Preston here. Let me tell you about my friends at Absolute Glass, the premier glass company of the Midlands, offering auto, home, and business glass repair. So if your glass is damaged, shattered, cracked, or broken, they can handle the job. If it's a cracked windshield, that's no problem. They'll come out to your location and replace it for you. They'll come out to wherever you are, whether you're at school, whether you're at home, whether you're at work. Doesn't matter where you are. Absolute Glass will come out to your location, replace it for you, usually for free. And they work directly with the insurance company to take away the headache. Now, if you're looking to increase the value of your home with new windows or mirrors, Absolute Glass will come out and take care of that for you, too. Windows, mirrors, shower enclosures. I say it all the time. If you can see through it, Ray and Marianne at Absolute Glass can do it. So check them out online at AbsoluteGlassInc.com. That's online at AbsoluteGlassInc.com. <laughs> 